Tie it down tightly so that wind won't blow it away. Okay, so we're back to test flight time. Let's go. After the flight test, we didn't put the glider in the trailer. We moored it to the ground and covered it. Wait, hold on. What happened? What was the result of speaking with the owner? We never got that either. Maybe we'll bring it up right now. We didn't take the glider apart today and just left it here like this. Oh, God. Asa-chan's eyes were shining. It must be almost time, guys. Katori looked towards the setting sun. We started our training camp today. The morning glory could appear at the end of the summer. Around the end of August or the beginning of September. In order to spot its signs as soon as possible and fly right away, we'll be leaving the glider here without dis disassembling it and a person on duty will be waking up early to observe the sky. Those usual circumstances made us all excited. She said without turning towards us while she was checking the mooring of the fuselage. The other day, Top Tapioca tried to prevent us from using the runway, but we got permission to use it again right away, because fuck that guy. Apparently, Tapioca was almost threatening the owners and said that if we have an accident, they'd be held responsible. Amane Senpai not only got permission from the school, but also assured the owners they won't be held responsible for anything. I'm sure they were a little confused, but they are the former members of the Soaring Club in the end. They're our allies at heart. <laughs> <laughs> Cut it out with that wicked laughter, you fool! <laughs> Senpai was looking at our exchange with a weak smile. She probably felt uncomfortable receiving special treatment like that. <laughs> eh, who gives a shit? <laughs> But he needs to stop trying to make decisions without consulting everybody and, like, you know, getting a majority. He needs to stop trying to be a dictator motherfucking tot, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, we didn't really want to confront him. We were just fed up with it that he needlessly pokes his nose in our business. Get your shit up out my business, my business, you motherfucking tapioca. Ugh. Katori looked at the glider covered with the sheet. What's wrong, Katori? Uh, we've seen it before in another universe. He destroys shit. He's an asshole. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so he's got access. He can destroy it anytime he wants if he really wants to. I really don't think he'd do that. That aside, I'm hungry. Let's go back and eat something. We left filled with anxiety. But hungry. Can't not eat. Alrighty then. There was nobody in the garage and the glider wasn't there either. They're probably still at the runway. I tried to interfere and prevent them from using the runway, but it was futile. That's because the board of directors is really fond of Mochizuki. Other teachers also expect too much from her. They think she could make Kifu Academy famous. Mochizuki is a genius. She would get the same achievements regardless of where she was. It, would, it won't be a, an accomplishment for our, of our students. Other than that, I want to help students who are trying their hardest. Like, for example, I want to graduate properly. Oh, here we go. I mean, we're from his perspective. Now we're actually going to get some fucking... some shit. Okay. Yeah, 
トビウオ荘の管理人から報告してもらってるサボりの時とそうじゃない時くらい分かってるんだぞねえおばあちゃんひどいところでこれかグライダーっていうのははいそうですこれを僕たちが直して飛ぶんですよくもまあこんなもの順調とは言い難いけどでも楽しいですよあまねもいるし望月かあいつとお前とでは住む世界がこんなので空飛んで雲の上まで行っちゃうんですよ<笑>きっとすごい体験になるんだろうなそうかもしれんなもし飛べるようになったら先生も乗せてあげますねはあ、huh. Wow, she offered him a ride? Wow. Flying a homemade glider is far beyond the scope of club activities. If she wants a hobby, she should find something else. Maybe she entered the robotics club. I didn't like that Misagi Isuka became close to Mochizuki Amane. Misagi is a problem student and she notoriously does strange things. It's probably because of her frail body that makes her miss classes often. She can't get along with others and is alone most of the time. I was trying to watch over her whenever I could. But then Mochizuki appeared and took her away from me. Mochizuki Amane. She wasn't a student you'd expect to go to a school like ours. She doesn't need to take classes. Nah, you could even say it was a waste of time to her. She studies by herself just fine. I thought she only needed a certificate. However, she turned down an offer to transfer to a college and stayed at our school. She was a nuisance because she could make things that Misagi came up with, re came up with a reality. Up until now, those were just pranks, but they went as far as fixing a glider and flying it by themselves? Then there was that accident. Every time I think about it, I regret not stopping her. Those guys are trying to fly again. They seriously want to reach that cloud. <laughs> Bitch, you already seen us flying. We know it works. The fuck, dude? The fuck? Anyway, after an early dinner, we gathered in the dining hall. We were going over the flight plan. If Senpai's predictions were right, the morning glory will appear in a few days. We will have to reach an altitude of two kilometers early in the morning and in different conditions than normal. Moreover, we'll have limited time to do that. We made a flight plan taking into account such unfavorable conditions, but... <laughs> It'll be hard to find a thermal that could take us that high, so we decided to use a mountain wave. A mountain wave is a strong air current that is formed when air flows over a mountain. The highest point of this wave can reach even a few times higher than the summit of the mountain. We will use the mountain wave that comes from Mount Tsukube, a mountain behind the school. By the way, mountain waves aren't an everyday occurrence, but we anticipated that it will be present for sure when a morning glory appears. That's because the morning glory that appears over Kazagara is caused by the mountain wave coming from Mount Tsukube to begin with. That's what Amane Senpai said. So we believe it. Alright. Between the mountain waves are spinning air turbulences called rotor winds. If we fly into an ascending part of that kind of turbulence, we'll be able to catch the mountain wave. But since those are turbulent currents, it's going to be very hard. Gotta rely on my skills, girl! I've already part practiced it in the simulator at the very least. Amana Senpai reproduced the Mount Tsukube mountain waves in the simulator. Of course, I don't think it's going to be just like the simulator, but it's better than nothing. Senpai looked uncomfortable. Agaha nodded. Asachan and Yurochan also agreed. Senpai looked at me. I want to take you there. でも、みんな乗れるわけじゃないですし。私たちはまた次の機会でいいです。ね、やるちゃん。ええ。私たち、まだ若いですから。
Well, yeah. Wani Senpai is almost a decade older than Asa-chan and Yoru-chan. You still haven't gotten over it? She nodded without confidence. You want the same thing to happen again? As everyone said that, Amane smiled, but she seemed somewhat lonely. No, worried. You're thinking about it too hard, Senpai. Take it easy. Yeah, become an idiot. Only a silly person would do something like this. Everyone laughed at my words. Making a glider and aiming to fly above the clouds was a silly thing to do. But it was fun because it was silly. Living extremely seriously would be boring. <laughs> Damn right you are. Be an idiot. One of us. One of us. Idiota. Idiota. <laughs> when Senpai joined the laughter... A strong wind blew and the dining hall windows clattered. Uh-oh. Agatha turned on the TV. It was the time for the weather report. On the TV, they showed the clouds coming from the west. Moreover, it's going to rain hard. Should we put the glider inside? We decided to quickly head back to the runway. Aw, oh, shit, dude. And this is when we found out that tapioca ruined everything. Again. The wind was blowing. The sheet in front of me was fl was fluttering. And tapioca. The ghost. Under that sheet was the glider. And I had an iron stake in my hand. Oh, this is... Oh, we, we are tapioca right now. Okay. It's probably, probably used for partitioning the land. I found it over there just now. It's heavy and its tip is sharp. One solid hit from this and any kind of FRP would crack. And several hits would completely smash it. Oh, he's considering it. I took off the sheet. The wings came into view. A gleaming white surface was shining in the moonlight. So, they somehow completed them. It must be Himegi's work. There are only a few students who have sufficient skills. <laughs> My mutter sounded almost like someone else's voice to me, as if it was heard by my other self. Is this the right thing to do? Those students worked really hard to make these wings, you know. Are you sure breaking these is your duty? As I answered my own questions, my hands that were holding the stake started shaking. I put it down and thought about it again. That's what I'm saying. You're just going to break it and we're going to fix it, bitch. And then they will certainly try to fly again. So it's useless. Breaking these beautiful wings would be pointless. At that moment, I realized something. There's one more way to prevent them from flying. I can use other means to make them unable to use the runway. Whoosh. The grass was wafting in the, the blowing wind. Oh god. So we actually get to witness how he destroys the fucking winch. Bastard. This time I can stop them. You fucking dickhole. Well, I guess this part of the story is the same as it was last time. Nah, it's just... I was thinking that tapioca might try to break the glider after all. Earlier, I quickly dismissed that possibility, but now that I think about it, he tried to get the garage demolished in the past. Is the glider looking alright? Hopefully the glider's looking alright. Tori asks Agatha, who was ahead of us. Uh-oh, the sheet's off. That's bad. I pushed Katori's wheelchair and rushed towards the glider. Wait, 
part of the sheet that had been taken away and the main wings were uncovered. Agaha, Asatron, and Yorochan checked the airframe, looking for any abnormalities. Oh, they still see him? He's gonna destroy it right before their very eyes? Oh, what a dick. Asachan walked closer and strained her eyes. I'll go check it out. I ran to the winch. When I got closer, I also saw that person. It's not Anchan, but it's a man. I could tell from the phys physique. That man was holding something like a long rod. Uh-oh. I kicked the ground and burst into a sprint. I dashed towards the man at top speed. What are you doing? When I called out to him, he jumped from surprise. But he didn't drop the rod from his hand. He opened the cover of the winch and was aiming at its inside. Stop! I leapt onto his arm as he was about to strike the winch. Oh shit. Did you stop him in time? We fell to the ground, entangled with each other. I immediately got up and pressed him for answers. What are you doing? You're... Agatha and the others caught up to me. I took the rod, a heavy iron stake, and threw it away. Then I looked down at the man. Of course it is. Who the fuck did you think it was going to be? Everyone was looking at the man, at Tapioca Sensei, in surprise. Agatha asked as if as she looked at the open cover of the winch. Tapioca was kneeling on the ground and looking down. He 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 eyes his eyes darting around and his lips were trembling. He looked quite shaken up, maybe because his hair and clothes were messy. What were you doing here, Tapioca Sensei? <laughs> Tapioca didn't answer. He didn't even look up. <laughs> Yorchan picked up the iron stake that I threw away. Everyone was startled when they saw it. With its sharp tip, it could be a dangerous weapon. Why would you do that? I didn't sense any hostility in Tapioca's voice. He was still shaking, as if he couldn't believe what he was going to do. We couldn't believe it. Well, that idea did cross our minds, but to think he would actually do this? Do you even know what you were doing? Katori's voice, or Vosi, <laughs> Katori's Vosi trembled with anger and sadness and frustration. Tapioca looked up at Katori, almost as if he was begging for forgiveness. His hands and knees were shaking and he couldn't stand up. As Amane Senpai finally got here, Tapioca glared at her. Oh my god. Stop hating on Amane, dude. I'm gonna kick you square in the nuts. Oh, 
Tapioca was muttering complaints. Agatha asked him calmly. Amane Senpai was baffled by Tapioca's words. Tapioca shut his mouth and looked down. His expression showed signs of deep regret. ま、Senpai was looking at Tapioca, still with a baffled expression. It seems she didn't understand what he was talking about. Tapioca clenched his fist in frustration. Senpai tried to say something, but it seemed she couldn't come up with the right words and shut her mouth again. Agatha started talking instead. Oh yeah, go Agatha, you do your thing, baby. Yeah, bitch. <laughs> もっとあるのにやろうとしない部員たちです。人数ばっか多くて。毎年初戦敗退するのが当たり前みたいな顔して。私がドアリングボを選んだのは誰一人誰かに連れてってもらおうなんて思ってないからです。ここにいるみんな
ミサギは欠席が多いせいか周囲になじめず孤立していたある時ひどい熱で1週間学校を休んだことがあった出席日数も危うくなり本人も学校へ行く気力を失いかけていた何度か相談を受け親御さんとも話をし退学する方向へ話が進みかけていた頃だった We all looked at a Mane Senpai. She did not know. Miska was taking a shock at the time. Miska was not a child. She was 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 a child. More, the, the more connections to Katori that we can get, I guess. Jesus. What does she want to need to stay? Talk for some of your soul, mom. Tita. Amana Senpai and Iska san met around the time they became 30 years, and then they gradually got close. Misa, you are there at the Shima Tanda. Good idea, you kill me or Motu. Misa, you are kill me or Motu. She is a night. Keredo. I don't see why that's such a bad thing, though. Yeah, Tapioca glared at Amane Senpai as he said that. But it's absurd to blame Amane Senpai for that. The responsibility lies with the teachers who favored her. They're all adults. Amana Senpai, who was still a child back then, shouldn't be held responsible for their actions. ソワリング部への風当たりが強くなっていたからだそれで早く成果を出そうとしていたんだろう不完全なままテストフライトを行って<笑>マネ先輩の言葉が強くなって when he approached the truth about the accident What happened? フライトそのものは問題なかったそうだただ着陸の際に操縦を誤り主翼を地面にこすってそのまま地面に叩きつけられた<笑> The wing hit the ground? I could easily imagine what kind of accident that could cause それでミスカも病院へ運ばれたが命に別状はなかったただ複数の骨折とショックによる発熱とで This doesn't even sound that bad, dude. All this build up just to find out she fucked up a little bit on the landing, broke a few bones, and got a fever. Who cares? What do you expect? Especially when she did it by herself like an idiot. Anyway. Senpai whispered absent mindedly after she heard things she didn't know about the accident. Her voice showed signs of shock from learning about the serious injury as well as relief that she made it mixed in. Relief that she made it mixed in. I, I kind of read that wrong, but uh, anyway, sorry. I'm distracted because there's a bug on my ceiling. Better not fall on top of me while I'm reading this shit, bug. Anyway, why were you keeping it quiet about that accident up until now? Because the parents said so. It's always the parents' fault. Her parents? What does he mean? いわゆる地元の名士だ外部も気にしたんだろう、uh -huh. 幸い事故は夏休みの人の少ない時期に起きた<笑>要望というのは建前で要するにもみ消すように指示されたんだ Seems lame. どうしてそんなこと意味わかんない After that, i s k a s a n dropped out of school, right? Why was that? Was it because of her injuries? k e g a m o g a i n no h i t o t s e v a Aruma. Motomoto Misagi no Yawa Kibishkutena. 
That was absurd! Katori condemned Tapioca. The rest of us probably felt the same way. As she said that, Tapioca, who was still kneeling on the ground, started shaking. He couldn't continue. Uh-oh. Is he going to start crying? His words were swallowed by sobbing. Tears streamed down from his eyes. Tapioca suddenly bowed down to him on his senpai? Uh, what? Tapioca was bowing so deeply that his forehead was almost touching the ground. Then... Okay. Amane Senpai was dumbfounded. She never expected to hear something like that. Did you fucking read it, asshole? Tapioca. Oh, sorry. Tapioca barely managed to squeeze those words out of his throat and then broke down crying. What a what an ass. What an ass. 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 Major ass. Not a fan of this guy. Nope. It was raining that day. I walked towards the dimly lit garage and called out, but there was no reply. The noise of the rain hitting the roof dulled my thoughts. When I returned here, all that was waiting for me was, an empty, was the empty garage and... The broken glider. Based on the condition of the glider, I could easily imagine that something bad ha or something had happened. I called out my best friend's name, but there was no response. Just what had happened? Is Iska all right? All kinds of thoughts spun around in my head. I searched a desk for any notes she could have left behind, but I didn't find anything. Instead, the photo of that cloud was missing from the picture frame. A broken glider in an empty picture frame. Those were the only traces left behind. But at the to that time, I didn't give them much thought yet. That's because there was something else I was really worried about. Iska! Where's she at? I rushed out of the garage to look for Iska. An unpleasant rain was falling outside. It seemed to be following me around. I never thought that I wouldn't be able to see Iska again. When I realized that, my world lost its color once again. Just as the forecast predicted, it rained the next day. The persistent, gloomy rain. It's no good. She shut herself in her room and won't come out. Senpai stayed shut in her room and didn't even reply when we called out to her. She didn't touch the food we left in front of her door, either. Oh, she must have got the letter. Nice. Yeah. Early this morning, Tapioca visited Flying Fish Manor despite the rain. He came to deliver Senpai a letter. Amane Senpai took the envelope with the letter from Tapioca. Sure, sure. The seal hadn't been broken.
Fuck you and them. これをお前に渡すことで Tapioca dropped the umbrella from his weak grasp at the entrance of the dorm. He exposed himself to the persistent rain. Sensei, please come in. I was watching from a little distance and invited him in, invited him in but Tapioca didn't move, as if he hadn't heard me at all. The rain continued soaking Tapioca's clothes. <laughs> And yet you still didn't give her the damn letter during that time? Super dick. There was a hint of blame in Tapioca's voice. At a glance, it seemed to be directed at Amane Senpai, but... I felt that those words were directed at himself. Yeah, see? Give her the fucking letter. Why, why take so long? What a dick. <laughs> it's a big burden for you. Fuck you, dude. You were the middleman. Her let it, let Amane deal with her parents then. Just be the middleman that you are, middleman. Middleman. <laughs> it was such a burden to hold on to this piece of paper all these years. Dick. Topioka Tapioca Sensei might have been crying. It's just that I couldn't see any tears because of the rain. So, oh, sorry. <laughs> Took a long time for him to say it, but he said it. Soaking wet, Tapioca apologized. The sight of a remorseful and crying teacher bowing his head to a student was really awkward. But he looked somewhat relieved, as if a weight that he had been carrying around for several years had been lifted from his shoulders. Yeah, could have done that several years ago, dick. That's what I'm trying to say. Anyway, as soon as Tapioca left, Amane Senpai opened Iskasan's letter with trembling hands. It was a final message from a friend she thought hadn't left behind anything for her. Tori and I were watching her closely. Mana's eyes opened wide in shock as she followed the contents of the letter. In the next instant, the light of her in her eyes vanished. That youthful sparkle that her eyes were always filled with was suddenly gone. Without answering, she started walking unsteadily. She climbed up the stairs. Senpai? Then she shut herself up in her room. And here we are back to present time. Agatha came in the middle of the rain and all the Soaring Club members gathered together. I told Agatha, Asachan, and Yorochan that Tapioca came this morning and gave Senpai the letter. I don't know. Tapioca said he hadn't read it, either. Yup. Only, the only one. I recalled Amane Senpai's face while she was reading the letter. That moment when the sparkle in her eyes vanished, as if her power was cut. I have no idea what it could have said to make her act like that, though. Probably. Everyone fell silent. I thought it was just like Asachan said, or rather, I wanted it to be like that. But from what I could tell from Senpai's reaction, it didn't seem like it. Katori was so worried about Senpai, she looked like she was about to cry, and Agatha patted her head. Yep, waiting around. Katori! Alright, sounds good. Nobody objected to the club president's plan. That's right, you don't object to the president because she's the president, bitch. After the group dismissed, Katori and I started preparing to make dinner. 
It was still pretty early time-wise, but we didn't know what else to do, so we got started. Fortunately, tonight we're having stew. The earlier we make it, the better it'll taste. Katori fed some vegetable scraps to Hat. As she watched him devour it, she muttered, Who knows? Her parents apparently aren't very, are very strict, so maybe they wouldn't let her keep him. As she looked at the duck wearing a hat, Katori lo got lost in thought. I looked out the window while I was stirring the stew. What gloomy rain. It started raining before dawn and was still coming down even now. They said it's supposed to stop in the evening, but... Hmm, no idea. Didn't she just forget about it? She hid it in a secret place and then left Flying Fish Manor. That might be true. But then, why did she leave without it? What? Yeah, I know. When I became the dorm mother, they gave me a list of things to watch out for, and that ex was explicitly written there. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Tori went, into de went deep into thought again. Possibly. Maybe so. Start looking, bitch. Start looking. Tori started looking around. I guess she wants to look for some more of those traces. Leave it for now and get to work. Hi. Katori, unsatisfied, went back to cutting vegetables. The sounds of the boiling stew, vegetables being chopped, and the wind and rain outside echoed around the room. I started worrying about the glider. It's been left on the runway since yesterday. After that thing with tapioca, we didn't take it apart in the end. We carefully covered it up with a sheet, but still. Hope it hasn't been blown away. Actually, we wanted to bring it into the garage today, but Anchan hadn't been around since this morning. We didn't have any way to transport it by ourselves in the middle of the rain, so we couldn't help but leave it there. A little rain shouldn't do anything. I guess I'll look at I'll go take a look later. Once dinner's ready. Alrighty then. Uh -huh, no rain. After we finished dinner preparations and I walked out of the dining hall, I caught a glimpse of someone leaving through the entrance. Was that Kanako san? As I thought that and went to check on Amane Senpai, Kanako san came down the stairs from the second floor. Huh? Kanako san? Then who was. Uh, what is it? Oh? Kanako-san pulled out a scrap of paper. It was folded. It was a folded up sheet of loose leaf paper. I took it and opened it. Oh, it was Iska-san's letter. As I scanned its contents, I understood everything. I knew why the light that resembled a starry sky vanished from Amane Senpai's eyes in an instant. Oh shit. Tell me what it says! Katori brought hat and left the dining hall. With trembling hands, I gave the letter to Katori. It's Iskasan's letter. When Katori saw my pale face, her expression stiffened. Then she quickly skimmed over the contents of the letter. Nani? She was shocked. Mana Senpai went outside a minute ago. I'll go look for her. You stay here and watch the phone. She might call. Also, tell Asachan, Yorochan, and Agaha about this. Could you get them to help look as well? After I told Katori what to do, I rushed outside. I mean, you caught her as she just left. She can't have gone that far. Okay, here we go. Dear Amane. あの、
嘘なんだ僕は本当は信じていなかったモーニンググローリーが来るなんて20年以上起こってなかった現象が僕がいる今この時に起こってくれるなんてそんな都合のいいことないって思ってたあまねはよく言ってたよね僕のことを天才だってけど違うよ本物の天才は君だあまね僕はちょっと人と違ったことをしているだけのただ知識過剰ってやつ、okay. なのに君にすごいって言ってもらえるのが嬉しくってもっと言ってもらいたくってそれで嘘をついたんだ信じてもない夢を掲げて君を騙したでもそのせいで君は大学へ行かず慶風学園に残ってしまった僕の嘘は君をあのちっぽけなガレージにつなぎ止めてしまった苦しいよあまね君のそばにいたい親友でいたいそんな僕の身勝手さがあまねの人生を狂わせてる辛くて苦しくて少しでも何か形にしたくてグライダーで飛ぼうとしたけどダメだった僕の翼は偽物だから飛べるはずなんてなかった僕は卑怯者の嘘恥ずかしい消えてしまいたい僕の最後のお願いを聞いてくれるかい僕のこと忘れてくださいそれで君は本来君のいるべき場所へ行ってくださいごめんねあまね Well that letter was fucking sad Because when you read it Like I thought it was gonna be something that was all fucked up I know, I know she wrote it like she said she's a liar But really it's, just, it's just an adorably sweet letter about being best friends And didn't want to lose her friends So she lied to her to get her to stay longer that, I don't see I mean I see something wrong with it But I don't see anything like I don't see any cruel intentions With that letter She felt bad so she said You know please forget about me Move on with your life. I can understand that letter 100%. But I can also understand why Amane is like, shit. But if she thinks about it from a friendship standpoint, she's got to see through that just like I did immediately, right? She's smart, right? She's a genius. She should be able to rationalize and figure this out. Especially since she loved Isuka so much. She should understand. I was sure there was some kind of reason. Some unavoidable circumstances. I didn't think Isuka would run off somewhere without me if that wasn't the case. But... The heavy rain was hitting my body. This hopeless, stupid me. I was, I was sure that a kind reality was out there somewhere. That everyone would reward me for all those lonely days I spent in that garage. I had been kind of expecting that. But you might be. I'm just a fool! The glider that we left on the runway covered by a sheet was being doused by the rain. The silhouette of the forward swept wings. A fragment of the dream that Iska and I saw. I was the only one who felt that way. I mean, okay. Let me refresh. Let me, let me, let me. Now that I'm really marinating and sinking, letting this all sink in, I get it why Amane would have reacted that way because. She thought Iska was really serious about taking her above the clouds. But if Iska's saying that it was all just because she wanted to hang out with her more, I don't know. I feel like Amane held on to that dream that Iska was lying about. I guess I guess I can understand she feels like the last few years that she wasted time, you know, with the dream that wasn't real. I guess that makes sense. But again, as I re will reiterate, it's not entirely bad thing because the dr to the dr the dream to Amane was real even if Iska like she did it for Iska because out of love because she you know was her best friend so anyway you get what i'm saying the point is it's all sad hopefully we get to see Iska again that would be a nice happy ending let's let's hope that we get there but anyway let's keep going <sighs> all strength suddenly left my body and before i knew it i had fallen to my knees i splashed around the water in a puddle <laughs> Everyone was tied down. 
This isn't a dream at all. It's a curse. Oh, shit. Oh, no. With my powerless hands, I took the sheet off the glider. No, Amane, don't do it! What appeared below was a dull-colored wing reflecting this dull rain clouds. I took aim at those wings. Uh-oh. Hello, Aga? She wasn't at school. If she didn't return home, she must have gone to that place. Yeah, please. We split up and were running around in the rain looking for Amane Senpai. She wasn't in the garage. I was in a hurry. Just ima imagining what state of mind Senpai could be in right now sent a sharp pain through my body. That letter undermined all of her premises. What Amane Senpai believed in. What she held dear. Everything. To think that Iskasan herself would deny their promise. After Iskasan disappeared, that was the only thing Senpai relied on. That's how she made it this far. The only thing she believed in, no matter what, was that she didn't want to part with Iskasan. Last summer, when we flew to the Morning Glory and failed, she gave up on her dream once. However, when she was together with us, she felt like going for it again. And despite all of that... Damn it, why?! The letter that I thought would save Amane Senpai betrayed her and thrust her to the very bottom. I was running. I didn't care about stepping in the puddles or getting drenched by the rain. <sighs> Before I knew it, the rain had stopped. I ran, I ran through the bushes, hurrying towards the runway. Amane Senpai! I shouted at the top of my lungs as I ran down the runway. Mud splashed up at my feet. Huh? I saw the white aircraft in the distance. The sheet that had covered the glider with had been taken off. <sighs> Amane Senpai! Senpai was right there. It looked like she was clinging to the wing that was resting on the ground. Senpai? Oh, God. When I called out to her, suddenly, Senpai suddenly raised her hands into the air and then hit the wing with a stone she was holding. Oh, no. Over and over again. Senpai, what are you doing? I grabbed her arms from behind and tried to pull her away from the glider. <laughs> Calm down, Senpai! I held her tight while she was struggling. Amane Senpai, please, calm down. <laughs> Senpai, Senpai's arms hang down powerlessly. At the same time, the stone she was holding fell to the ground. I hugged her even more tightly and stroked her back to calm her down. Senpai. Agatha came running towards us from, from the distance. Behind her were Asachan and Yorochan, then Katori, and for some reason, Anchan as well. <laughs> Katori said anxiously as she saw Senpai wrapped up in my arms. Agatha saw the part of the main wing that Senpai had been hitting and rushed over to it. The stone left countless scratches there. Senpai did it. I let go of Senpai. She was unsteady, but somehow managed to stand on her own. We read Iskasan's letter. What should I say? That's not true! Senpai weakly shook her head. Oh god, that's how you're going to look at it? Oh, great. それなのに私は私がバカみたいに約束に姿勢でお迷惑をかけてこのままだ君たちのことまで狂わせてしまったこんな翼はもう折ってしまった方がいいんだ Amane Senpai tried to pick up the stone again. Please, stop, Senpai! I grabbed her arm and stopped her. It's not a lie. No matter what Iskasan thinks, for us, it's a real dream. 
Everyone looked at Amane Senpai and nodded. Their feelings are sincere. But Senpai's eyes were blank. The words didn't reach her closed off heart. The emotional trauma that she received was much, much deeper. My, sorry. No. Senpai grabbed my arm and looked up as if she was pleading with me. Otherwise, I won't be able to get back to normal. I could sense that desperate appeal inside her blank eyes. Senpai was about to be crushed by extraordinary grief. Oops, sorry. Clicking out of my window accidentally. How can I... What should I do? Is holding her the only thing I can do? Is that all lovers are good for in the end? No, I'm on it. Oh shit. Anchan, he's gonna be the fucking word the the words of wisdom will save his words. They will save us in this truly bad situation. Anchan, who had been watching us silently, spoke up. Senpai stopped trying to shake off my hand and turned her gaze towards Anchan. Oh god, he's gonna fucking smooth talk the shit out of this situation. Here we go. Anchan nodded. Oh my god. Did he find her? I knew it! Anchan, dude! He's. I told you, all you had to do was tell him and he was gonna fucking be there in a heartbeat. Oi? While everyone else was surprised, Katori nodded slightly. Then he heard about Iska-san's letter and brought Katori here, I guess. Haha, <laughs> I knew, see? See, Anchan's smart. See? He loves her enough that he wanted to find that. I knew it! See, you, you could read that. As soon as he was like, it's cool. You said sanatorium, right? Got you. Like, that's that was all he said when we told him. He was like, you, that's what, just make sure I didn't hear you wrong. It was sanatorium? Yep, all right. I'll be back with uh, Isaka-san news as quickly as I can. You found it? Anchan's expression neither confirmed nor denied my question. <laughs> of course it does. Anchan shook his head. No way. Is she already dead? I wasn't the only one who had such a bad feeling. Everyone else looked uneasy, but Anchan had a gentle smile on his lips. いつかはちゃんと無事だったって。ありがとう、達也。でも、もう。手紙。悪いが、俺も読ませてもらった。ショックだったお前の気持ち。よくわかるつもりだが。俺はなんとなく気づいてたよ。あいつが無理してるの。
It's our glider. Oh, or she took the photo herself. Okay. Okay, so she took her own photo. Nice. Even better then. Mana Senpai was gazing at the scene in the picture. The rest of us also stared at that familiar scene. At the sky we flew through one year ago. Hell yeah, she was. You said this picture gave her motivation? Yeah. See? She realized her friend didn't forget about her. Get it? Alright, alright. This might slowly help Amane realize that her friend still loves her and realizes what she did. And she probably felt bad for giving up on their dream, even though she said the dream was a lie. It wasn't really, though. え、姉さん。同じようにあの雲と出会う。そして暗い道を見つけた。それはいつも空に込まれて空を見上げていたからよ。私は違った。姉さんいなければきっとここには今かった人間。いつか Yurachan nodded quietly. This miraculous coincidence occurred because she single mindedly pressed on and aimed for the clouds. Would you call that a coincidence? Senpai laughed sadly. Senpai said apologetically. Senpai, why? When we flew that day, it wasn't for nothing. でも Senpai. It might be just like Senpai said. The morning glory wasn't something she was aiming for herself. It was just a promise with Iska-san. Senpai wanted to know so much more about her, that's why she aimed for it. But the letter destroyed that whole premise. Amana Senpai lost her reason to go for it. I recalled the words she said to us when we asked her to become our advisor. Right now, I don't have the same dream as you guys. We thought Senpai wanted to fly, but it was our wish, not hers. Tori muttered. It didn't feel like she made up what she wrote there because she was worried about Amana Senpai. Iska-san was certainly well aware how much the letter would hurt Senpai, but she had, she had to have written it. I guess she must have felt really guilty about lying to her. Uh, see? You misread the situation. You should have just quit when you were ahead, Mane. Nah, nah, I'm just kidding, but you know what I mean. If she wanted Senpai to cling to that dream, I guess she would have left that picture there. But Katori said, 
Alright, cool. Somebody's actually reading into the letter. Thank God. Everyone looked at Katori. I didn't know what she was trying to say. But I wanted her to say something. Some words that would make us believe that what we've been holding dear wasn't a mistake. Yeah, see? And if anyone would have a similar like mindset and would understand how Isuko came to you know writing that letter Katori would know because she's got a very similar mindset Isuko Tori squeezed the hem of her skirt tightly as she tried to put up with embarrassment. That gesture told everyone that she was going to speak frankly about her difficult past. While Katori was telling her touching story, Agaha moved closer and put a hand on her shoulder. As if that encouraged her, Katori resumed talking. The strange rule of Flying Fish Manor, the duck named Hat, the time capsule, the flight log that was in Katori's room, and the glider. If we looked in other places, we probably would have found more. けど、違うかもしれないって思うようになった。私の部屋にあったあのノート。イスカの振り取ログ。あれは忘れていたんじゃない。誰か匂んで欲しくてそこにしまってあったの。Exactly. Yeah, see? She did actually want to do these things. But again, the letter was directed at Amane, so Amane would stop, quote unquote, wasting her time and, you know, move on with your life because clearly I'm holding you back. So she felt bad, see? She wrote the letter because she felt bad. And that's how I kind of read into it, too. So I get it. Without that picture, it would have just been a diary that some strange girl had forgotten. That photo, that magnificent and beautiful scene that could captivate one's heart at first glance, breathed life into the diary. There's no mistake that it was a necessary detail to Iska-san. And without that, Katori wouldn't have aimed for the sky. She was just like Iska, who found that picture in a flight log of a former soaring club in the garage, which made her aim for the sky herself. <laughs> あ、空っぽの部屋の壁を埋め尽くすように、たくさんの雲の写真が貼ってあった。あそこなら次に入ってくるのは同年代の女の子だもの。でも自分からはそうして欲しいって言えない子だったのよ、きっと。私も似たところあるから、わかるの。Tori said shyly and squeezed the hand Agatha put on her shoulder. But now it was different, like she was confirming that there are friends who would say the same thing. でも本当に覚えてて欲しかったのは。
イスカが残りたかったのはやっぱりアマネちゃんの中なのよ。Exactly. いつか自分が死んでいなくなってもアマネちゃんが覚えててくれればいい。たとえ信じていなくてもアマネちゃんにモーニンググローリーを見せたかった気持ちは嘘じゃないはずよ。The idea, I'm getting it more and more and more as we go here, and I'm, I'm coming up with more of my thoughts here. She wanted to show it to her because it was her best friend, and she made her a promise, and she didn't want the promise to be a lie. But then when it all fell apart, she, you know, tried to tried to be. I don't know. I've, I've already explained this enough, haven't I? <laughs> Before I noticed, tears welled up in Katori's eyes. It was as if Iska san's feelings had been transferred to her. As Katori looked at her with teary eyes, Amane Senpai stood stock still with an astonished expression. Senpai? Uh, what do you think? Do you still think the time you spent with Isuka san was a lie? Senpai shook her head silently. She hung her head and bit her lip. Her expression showed that she didn't know what to do. She was trembling, as if she was frightened. She wanted to start walking, but was afraid to step forward. That's how she looked. Isuka san is not a liar! The music kicked in there. Amane Senpai raised her head and looked at me. But you're the only one who could prove that, Senpai. I nodded. Then I moved next to the glider. You designed those wings for Isuka-san to go towards those clouds together. You should fly, Senpai, with this glider. And you should cross over the passage of clouds. Yeah, if you make the promise fulfilled, lies are not lies anymore. <laughs> Let's fly, Senpai, to prove that Iskasan isn't a liar. We'll take you to the place that you were promised. <laughs> Amane Senapi, that's supposed to be Senpai, looked at everyone in a daze. Then she nodded timidly. Hell yeah. At that moment, an orange ray of light pierced through the clouds on the, on the west. Oh yeah. Oh yeah! Just as the weather report said, the rain stopped by evening and the clouds were gradually clearing up. Then the setting sun started poking through the gaps in the clouds. Bathed in that light, the wet glider glistened red like it was on fire! As if it had come back to life. Katori looked at the sky in the opposite direction and opened her eyes wide. Is it the purple sky? Oh yeah. Everyone looked at where Katori was pointing. What there was... The eastern sky had a bluish purple hue. Yeah. Hell yeah. We gazed at that scene in blank amazement. It was the sight we had been waiting to see for a year. The sky we had yearned and prayed for. But to come with this great timing. I looked at Senpai, who was standing next to me. She was staring at the, that sunset sky as if she was seeing something unbelievable. <laughs> 
There's no mistaking it. Yeah, it's a sign. It was a miraculous coincidence. However, for all of us who had been anxiously looking up at the sky every day, it was bound to happen. It's coming tomorrow morning. The morning glory, baby. Iskasan's and Imani Senpai's promised day. The promised land is near. Hell yeah. So... I don't know how much longer this is going to be. I wonder if I should stop now. I don't have another hour. And I feel like the ending plus whatever else might happen might take over an hour. So... Alright, I'm going to stop right here. This is actually a good spot. So... Whew, that was quite an interesting just flurry of, of, of emotions. I actually may or may not have got a little choked up that with the whole Katori explanation thing. This game does a really good job at writing some dialogue and putting together a story. Even if the sex scenes are hilarious, the story itself is really good. So anyway, the only reason I'm stopping now and not just going till we're done is because I don't know how much longer there is left and I only have about an hour of you know time to record right now. Hour more. And I have less than an hour more. So if it's only an hour left, cool, or less, cool. That just means the finale of of Amane's story will be short, but I doubt it. Something tells me it's going to be super long like Katori's was, where we're going to have a bunch of shit happen. Like, so we're going to fly, but there might be some other things. And then, of course, there's whatever happens after that. And I still feel like we're going to have one more sexy time before it's all said and done with, just like with Katori. So, that being said, hopefully you're enjoying this read-through, this, 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 this sensual reading of If My Heart Had Wings. And uh, in the next session of my recording, I may finish up the game. But in the next episode, it's time for the morning glory. Once again, are you ready? I'm really hoping this ending has Iskas on it as well. I'm, I'm really hoping she shows up. That'll make this all the more heartwarming. But anyway, enough about me. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace!